Righteous, empathetic, heroic. Just a few of the words used to describe you. Considering that you saved yourself from your kidnapper when you were 16 years old, I have to ask, does it haunt you that your kidnapper was never found? Haunt? No. We find missing people who have slipped through the cracks and we bring them home. I am going to find your son. This is this is a this this is a, a real pleasure for me to really uh, get to talk to some of the other positions that, in filmmaking because I think it's so essential to why I'm here and mm -hmm. why uh, I hope that uh, a lot more people will get into the all of these other careers in film and you know just short story I know this is about you but just so I could like couch it for my audiences. The way that I got into Black Tree Media and started doing these interviews is I worked on a Spike Lee movie and I had like a two second extra, I was a PA, but I it was the first time I looked at the credits looking for my name. And then I, I, I recognized all these names that I've been working with for four or five weeks that, I, that were people and that were jobs. And it, it was the first time it really hit me that all the names that comes are, are jobs and, and essential jobs. So. Um, for the, for the audience, can you tell them a little about what are some of the duties of a, of a prop master on a, on a TV or film set? Yeah, um, first of all, thank you for having me, Jamal, and thank you for sharing that story. I'm definitely going to want to know what Spike Lee movie that was before this interview is over, because that's awesome. Um, yeah, getting that hit um, from the film industry and being being a part of it is is addicting and rewarding and challenging um and then so the duty of a prop master is to uh take all the objects that the actors interact with and bring them to life that could be anything from a coffee cup to the sorcerer's stone so um that's that's what we do at the end of the day to just no, 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 bring life to the set and have actors be able to interact with things gives them more depth to get into their characters. So I, I know as far as a production, a producer is, especially on a smaller budget film, is looking to uh, manage cost and everything else. So I imagine that you don't have to buy every prop. Do you have like a garage or a big, you know, a case full of like random props that that you use and reuse yeah. on that you work on i got a i've got a 48 foot truck i used to keep them in the shed but then my wife made me uh, get the truck so she can get all that stuff out of there so we could tear that shed down so now i've got a 48 foot truck uh, and if anyone ever broke into it they would be like everything here is useless <laughs> it's, it's all just fake money and fake drugs and director's chairs and things like that. So yes, um, uh, I own a, I own a trailer where I keep what's called my kit and we have a variety of different things that uh, pretty much we can go into any show expecting. You can expect to have, you know, files and paperwork and police. So we have a variety of different fun knickknacks. It's like a crazy grandmother's attic kind of thing. <laughs> And sometimes you have to create or you have to create you know, customizable uh, yeah. props. So, I mean, is, is that, is that something that you just work with other people or do you actually go and, you know, if they say they need a sorcerer's stone, are you out there like, uh, you know, chis chiseling off some, <laughs> some emeralds? To... <laughs> as much as I can and within the budget. Um... <clears throat> Yeah, we, we get to oversee that. We My job is to conceptualize what the prop is, as how I interpret it. Uh, basically, I'm an artist for hire at the end of the day, and you hire me for my interpretations and my, my willingness to collaborate. Because at the end of the day, the final product is what goes on that camera, and it can change to the last second. And that's so beautiful to me. And it takes everyone's art to come and look at one thing, one scene, and bring it all together and collaborate like that. It's 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 beautiful. And so, um, yeah, I get to over. I I'm get I get to the grateful position of being able to oversee that stuff. So yes. <laughs> And um, you know, crazy enough, and in, in, in recent, in pretty recent news, like we had 
you know, a problem with a prop on a set of, of Rustin uh, and yeah. where something turned deadly because so like, are, is it also your job to like check to make yeah. sure when you're using uh, weapons, it's not, you know, hot or whatever and all that stuff. Yeah. You know? And the, yeah, absolutely. That was, I remember that, that spread like wildfire. I was walking out of a movie and so I just, my phone started blowing up right before it even hit the news because it was, we take it that seriously, I guess is what I'm trying to say. So um, any, any right, any rightful prop master would hire the correct people to do that. Um, I myself would hire an armorer. I'm, I'm with, I, I understand weapons, but I, at the end of the day, I'm not the best one to do so. So uh, productions are kind enough and willing to be safe enough because obviously we need to be to hire an armorer who is someone who is licensed to handle these weapons and to always oversee them. I provide like I said, on my trailer, I have all the necessary safety equipment to keep those things locked away. And uh, I also have a a, a, uh, a cart that comes out that's a safe that's on wheels. So it can be always safe and locked away. Tragic, absolutely surreal to see my job title, uh, you know, on Vanity Fair for once and not in a good way. So it's important for us to never let that happen. So even if I'm holding... I was doing a movie called Werewolf by Night. We just had a toy gun that looked like a real gun, but I still went out there and we had a meeting and I showed those camera operators. I showed everybody who I was going to be pointing at the actors that it's safe. And that's, I'll never, I'll never have not enough time to be safe. So yeah, thank you for asking. Give me five seconds because you see like it's the guy shot coming right now. The sun. I see it. I see it. Let me close my blind for a second. All right. Uh, so, so, so now I'm interested in, in how you got into this profession. Like, what what took you into uh, into the craft of props, into the world of film and television? Like, what was yeah. your, what's your origin story in that? Uh, my origin story is I went and got a master's degree and I got a marketing job at IBM that I hated, but I thought it would be cool because I was working in the Sears Tower in Chicago. <laughs> uh, couldn't I didn't like it. My wife, she uh, got a lovely job at, um, at uh, I lived in Wilmington, North Carolina, and uh, Iron Man 3 came to town and that changed everything. I left my job and a a lovely Marvel prop master named Russell Bobbitt gave me a chance, and that was 12 years ago. Mm. Wow, wow. You get your first chance on a Marvel project. I don't know that. It was, it, was, it was just serendipitous. Um, something about me said, well, I, never was I was never brave enough to go to L.A. and try it, and I was happened to live in this coastal town in North Carolina, and Iron Man 3 came to town. It was just like a wake-up call, and... Uh, yeah, it was it was a surreal experience. I grew up, I, I was a comic book kid. So it was fun to be able to see that. It's like, this is what I want to do. And um, props was always the thing that called to me because Captain America's shield was always so identifiable or the Ninja Turtles always had their individual ones, obviously Raphael being the best one. So it was just all those little things that I loved about storytelling. And um, that's... Uh, <sighs> then it was 12 years later it, it kind of just happened happened like that <laughs> and I, know, I know everybody got like like for my eyes was to get on the bus for the Spike Lee movie that was shot in Nashville while I was in school at Vanderbilt the first time um uh -huh. I think everybody has a different origin story but yours is kind of you know unique how you got there how, how would you advise somebody that wants to that's that's watching this interview and say hey you yeah. know I really like props like what would be First, is there a union? Do you have your own union? And then second, like what what would be like the more strategic path for somebody to like kind of break into this type type of field? Um yes, I, I I'm I'm an, a member of IATSE, uh, which I'm a very proud member um of. Um yeah, so if someone wants to get into the film industry, I say uh take the money that your parents are paying for your film degree drop out and come down to Atlanta, join that. And uh, yeah, just, it's very DIY. At the end of the day, you have to have, I, I think I grew up as a punk rock kid because I love DIY-ness. 
do it yourself. And that's what this industry is. And Atlanta is a welcoming place for that. Also, obviously, various other places, but I was able to find my good fortune here. Um, so it's it's the time right now. And I, what I love about Atlanta is that we're starting to tell sincere stories of what this city can represent and how the, the world's going to start looking. And that's what found really spoke to me about the sincerity of it. And this is NK, my showrunner, a black woman who was just so strong and who put all her team members as strong black females, white females. And it was just like, awesome. I was like, this is really, really cool. And so everyone had their stories of DIYness to get to that place. And we all found each other and it was just absolutely beautiful. So come on down, come on down to the ATL. All right. Well, look, I appreciate you taking me uh, to your experiences on the set so that we can get more people uh, on the set to find out, you know, all these great careers that that happens when those credits roll. And, uh, and I'll be looking out to see. I know you've worked on a lot of a lot of stuff that now I had to go back and check out the process. Like, oh, yeah, let me see what, you know, he had, had his fingers on it. Uh, and I can't. I, I hope we get through this strike fully so everybody can be back to work. But um, I'm glad that you've been able to have a, a great contribution and that you guys could still uh, put in your work in Atlanta. Thanks for your time. Thank you for taking the time. I really appreciate it, Jamal. Thank you. Appreciate you. Thank you, everybody.